Hello and welcome back to Infinite Remote Control. I'm John and today we're going to be converting this F450 to a DJI F550 um, or you could say that we're building an F550 um, but we're basically just getting the setup. We're not going to be putting in the flight controller yet um, but we, we will be uh, soldering on the ESCs and I'll show you guys how to do all of that stuff. So um, first just with a comparison, uh, here is the F5 or F450 um, frame and here's the F550 frame as, and as you can see it's a considerable amount larger and, um, and that's going to give you the extra width that you're looking for and it's also going to allow you to run um, six total motors propellers um, and if you're looking to do this conversion the parts that you're going to need um, and that's if you have an already flying uh, F450 but you want an F550 the parts that you're going to need are the two uh, plates and you can order these off of eBay I believe at the time of this video they cost me $37 and um, the, the supplier that I got them from also included the screw kit um, and the velcro and uh, some wires um, and that basically is going to give me all the extra hardware that I'm going to need to add on my extra uh, motors and ESCs and arms. You're going to need two arms. Uh, I chose red because I figured they'd be easiest to see in a blue sky, um, but any color is up to you. You can find these in a lot of colors nowadays. Um, you can, you're going to need two more ESCs and you're going to need two more motors and then you're going to need two more props. You're going to need one normal prop and you're going to need one reverse prop. Um, props are about $10. ESCs are uh, I believe $20 a piece. Motors are $25 a piece. Arms are like $4 a piece. And um, like I already said the frame is about $40. Or not, not the frame but more like the, uh, the chassis plates. Or, I, I don't know the, the plates so let's get started um I guess first what I'm gonna do is just quickly remove all of my landing gear so then we have the frame itself and then I'll continue on into the video all right so now all we have is the frame motor ESC's um, just the standard stuff that you would get in a uh, almost ready to fly kit except I do still have the uh, um, the flight control in there and I also uh, took off the propellers uh, for uh, further uh, testing with this when I put the nozz into it and also just to make uh, the disassembly and reassembly a little bit easier. So now let's get started. Um, let's I'll zoom you guys in here and first I'm gonna take off these um, how many are there 16 I think screws and you're gonna need a two millimeter hex wrench. Um, yeah. Alright guys, finally we got all of those screws off. And um, now this top plate is going to be free. And if you're wondering what that is right there, that is a Hobby King UBEC. Um, I believe it can take up to maybe a 5 or 6S LiPo. I want to say 5. And um, that just solders straight into your um, battery connections onto the board. And, um, or should I say, a plate. And that is going to supply. Um, a BEC or a, I believe it's like a 5 volt um, power to my KK2 board because all these B, uh, ESCs are um, opto ESCs which means that they do not have a BEC but uh, that's kinda like not really relevant so I'm gonna take some scissors and I would recommend cutting from the top um, of the zip tie or on above the electronic and not uh, below and that's only if you have um, zip ties as it is and if you guys are wondering how I did this um, I just plugged the UBEC 
directly into a Y lead um, or a servo wire splitter that goes into motor one and then that just connected straight to motor one on the board if you guys I don't know if you guys saw that or not um, it doesn't really matter let's take out motor two motor three and motor four all right so now we have all of the motor wires disconnected and I guess we can just go ahead and take all of the receiver wires off and um, you know while we're at it let's just cut the receiver off as well uh, that was probably out of frame but again not really a needed video and here's the receiver that I'm using uh, I'll probably have a review of this uh, on my channel soon um, and they've really, the Turnigy brand has surprised me, it's a cheap radio, um, but it has um, worked and you know if a radio works, I haven't really tested range that much, but I don't fly FPV so I don't need range. Um, now I Loctited, if you can hear that, um, the, just the squeaking, I Loctited these screws <clears throat> in um, because that's just gonna give me an extra layer of protection and I'm never gonna really need to remove the bottom plate I will need to remove the top plate on occasion if I'm modifying my KK2 board or when I have the NOS in there I'll need to be modifying that and um, having Loctite on the screws just makes them a lot harder to get out which is why I put them onto the screws that I don't really need to take out. I put them onto, I put Loctite onto the, whoa, motors, and I put them onto the screws that go through the bottom plate. Um, speaking of Loctite, I use the blue compound Loctite, and uh, that just seems to work best for me. Uh, some guys like to use red. Um, but that stuff is just a little bit stronger and blue is the best all around uh, Especially when you're gonna have very little vibrations um, We're almost done here and when you're doing this um, You should be very uh, Careful um, Because you do have all of the electronics still in place so you don't want to wreck any of them or damage them all right, so now we have this mess, and basically all that's holding the arms onto the board now are just the zip-tied ESCs still soldered to the main board. Um, here's the KK2 board. Let's see if I can remove this. Uh, I'm probably going to have to do it off camera because I have it glued down. Um, so I'm going to do that real quick and then I'll come right back to you guys. Alright, so this is probably going to be the easiest part of the entire disassembly. And that's going to be unsoldering the ESCs from the original F450 board. And all that's going to require you to do is take your soldering iron, put the chip down, or the tip down, and press until you see the solder start to uh, liquefy and then just remove them as you saw me do there um, there's no real right or wrong way to do this as long as you get it done um, I see a lot of people they'll cover up the solder joints with or solder points with maybe some liquid rubber or um, uh, some some permanent goo gel and um, if you were to have done that uh, I would I would not have been able to unsolder these as easily as I am now so um, if you don't cover these with a goo or something like that uh, you do need to be uh, careful um, with them maybe whoa Um, here's something that I just wanted to point out before I go on to the next step. Um, I ended up actually super gluing uh, the wire down 
um, right there because uh, I did not want the solder to pop off for some reason. Uh, the wire was having a hard time sticking down there. And I actually forgot all about that over the past year. And uh, when I went to unsolder it, a lot of smoke came up. So you do definitely want to be careful. Um, I was just quickly unsoldering these at a strange angle. And um, I didn't really inspect all my points before I went to go unsolder them. So before you start to unsolder, uh, you are going to want to check uh, all of your points just to make sure that you are not uh, going to start a fire or anything like that. Alright, so now the next step is going to be pre-tinning each of these uh, solder points or solder tabs. And um, as you can see, the uh, original ESCs uh, still have solder all over the wire, which is nice because that means that we're not going to have to pre-tin those, but uh, also you're going to need to pre-tin the new ESCs, the two new ESCs that you'll be adding on. So uh, come back to you when that's all done. All right, well, I actually went ahead and soldered all of the ESCs on as well, and um, I did find uh, a couple good things and a couple bad things. A couple good things is that uh, the ESCs seem to connect onto this board just a little bit better than they did in the past, so maybe they've changed up the board just a little bit. Um, and the new ESCs uh, soldered right on, and they almost appeared to be pre-tinned. Um, one, uh, one thing that you might want to do before you continue the installation is just tug on them and wiggle them just to make sure that they're very firm on there because the last thing that you want to do when you're flying is uh, lose a motor because of a bad solder. So now you're going to want to figure out which way is going to be forward and I've not quite figured that out yet. Um, because I'm going to be running the landing skids, um, I'm going to be having this big contraption on there. So I guess right now I'll, I'll go ahead and figure out what the best way to mount that up will be. Alright, so now i figured out that this is going to be front or forward and um, this is going to be the rear. I'm going to be configuring this hexacopter in a, uh, I guess you could call it Y configuration. Um, and that means that I'm not going to have one, the, the front arm is not going to be like this, but the front is actually, actually going to be two, uh, just like this. Like I said earlier, I've chosen white for the front. So basically, I'm just going to mock it up right now. And uh, it's important. It's very important to um, run your two ESC wires through uh, the arm, like so, um, so that you don't regret that later on uh, down the road. Here, um, actually, let's go ahead and install the motors right now. Uh, here, I have a motor and it looks like it's just gonna go right on like right in like that um, one thing that I've seen a lot of people do and I do myself is um, run the motor wires through the arm itself come on why won't it go through there we go like that, uh, just to keep things a little bit neater. And um, these actually feel a little bit different. Um, this should come up on the camera. But this one, the new one looks just a little bit lighter. Um, it's hard to say, and also the plastics look a little bit different. Let's see if we can focus on this, because this is something to bring up. Come on, focus. Why won't you focus? There we go. So the new one is the one on the bottom. And it does look just a little bit different. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and install the two motors with the screws provided. Um, I'll probably end up just fast forwarding through this part. So talk to you guys in a couple seconds. All right, so we're gonna be using the M3 screws, which are a little bit larger than the M2 screws um, that were used 
on the frame here. I'm just gonna show you. I dipped a little bit of blue Loctite onto it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and line up the motor. Let's see here. All right. And now with a two millimeter hex driver, I can just tighten it down and uh, do the rest. As I'm installing this last screw, I'd like to uh, comment on why I really like the DJI uh, products. Um, as you can see, this motor is an all-in-one design, which basically means that you're not going to have to worry about any uh, accessory packs or anything uh, to mount onto your Outrunner motor. It actually has the, um, the, the shaft built right into it that you're going to uh, put your prop onto. So you don't need to worry about uh, adding anything else on. And uh, DJI uh, is very well supported because so many people use their products. And uh, it really is worth the, the little bit of extra money, I think. Uh, their part support, I have heard, well, not parts of per support, but warranty uh, is not top notch. Um, because I've heard a lot of people, or a lot of people complain that DJI just says, well, figure it out yourself, and they don't really support their warranties. But their products are, uh, I believe, above uh, in quality compared to. Uh, other people's um, or uh, other companies. So now I'm gonna flip this over and um, install all of the screws with blue Loctite uh, to the bottom of the chassis. All right, guys. So as you can see, I have secured all of the arms to the bottom frame piece. Um, this is going to be it for part one. Make sure to check out part two where I go ahead and install all of the uh, Nazi equipment. And then in part three, I'm going to be finishing up the build, putting on the props, uh, finishing up the ESCs, and uh, finally tuning, uh, calibrating everything, and just showing you guys which way you need to set this thing up to get it flying. So this took about an hour uh, just to do this bit. And... Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and uh, like the video. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Either way, it helps me. And uh, make sure that you go check out part two. Link in the description and also on the screen in front of you.